Hi and welcome to Tengi Reviews The Twilight Zone. I'm Tengi and today's episode is Walking Distance. Walking Distance was written by Rod Serling and directed by Robert Stevens. The plot? Martin Sloan, a stressed advertising man, has fled his high-pressure job in New York and finds himself on a dirt road not too far from his childhood hometown. Nostalgic for the simpler times of his childhood, he walks into the town and finds things exactly as they were 25 years before. Realising he's gone back in time to his own youth, Martin tries to reconnect with his younger self and his own parents, but what will they make of the man Martin Sloan has become? Points of interest in this episode. Gig Young's car is sensational. I love how the very first shot establishes the main character here. In his expensive car, his impatient, self-important, pretty rude, but at the same time, he's clearly very stressed and not a happy man. This is very economical storytelling. Sensational opening narration from Rod Serling here. It's concise, poetic, immediately compelling. Again, this preoccupation characters have with things that happened 20 or 25 years in the past. And that would take it back to 1934 to 39, the years leading up to World War II. Now, can you see where I'm headed with this? Can you imagine why people of this generation might have wished they could travel back before the horrors of that time, it does seem very much a recurring theme in this series. Sloan makes a jokey remark about how he would have jumped out the window if he'd had just one more work stress. It's hard to see this as a purely light-hearted remark, given how stressed Martin seems here. Then we see him reflected in the mirror, another recurring theme in these stories. And before in the series, it has been used to suggest a kind of imminent psychological crisis. The idea of a person reflecting on themselves and their own identity, I think, is also evoked by this device. The fact that it is Sloane's reflection that we see walking back to his hometown of Homewood seems significant. Almost a through-the-looking-glass moment in the story. Something happens in this liminal space between... Sloan's current home, New York, and his hometown. Is this a meditation on that journey between childhood and adulthood? And the differences between who we hope we will become and how we actually turn out? This feels like a very sensitive topic and one that is seldom explored on screen as it is here. There is something very poignant and startlingly intimate about the extreme close-ups in this episode and the kind of personal reflection they capture. It's really hard not to be affected by them. The mirror is used again when Sloan gets to the drugstore in Homewood, a scene very reminiscent of the one in Where Is Everybody in the drugstore. While the tone is on one level nostalgic, it is also unsettling and haunting, and the score very much amplifies this feeling of unease. Ron Howard looks like a baby here. He is so young. The moment when he stands up and says, you're not Marty Sloan, is kind of chilling. Even more chilling, the moment when the older Martin Sloan recognises and confronts himself as a child. Again, this idea of a kind of mirror reflecting the self in a deeply unsettling way that morphs into a moment of stranger danger when the child is terrified and runs away. This is the second time a child runs away from Martin Sloan. The idea that your younger self would be horrified by what you have become is pretty disturbing. So many unsettling moments in this story. Martin confronting his parents through the screen door. They look like ghosts through the screen. And it's yet another uneasy moment that reinforces this feeling that what Martin is doing is forbidden. He's crossing a line of taboo here some deep-rooted taboo about time and the way humans can travel through it. Only one way is allowed, forwards, not backwards. The parents' reaction of fear slamming the door against him is equally disturbing. Somehow this is worse than the notion that your younger self would be repulsed by how you turned out. The idea that your parents would be horrified to know <laughs> Your adult self is equally distressing, perhaps even more so. 
This is not the romanticised travelling back in time of a film like Somewhere in Time. This is travelling back in time almost in a fugue state. And I think we are supposed to wonder if Martin has fallen into some kind of psychological collapse at the petrol station on the edge of town as he fled the stresses of his job. Even Martin's own father tells him, you're probably sick, you're having delusions. But Martin Sloan is now back in time, Serling tells us midway through the story. And it almost seems like this story takes off from where the 16mm shrine finished. Serling is taking that idea and going a step further with it. Well, several steps further. What would happen if you actually did go back in time to the world of your own childhood? But there is something shatteringly painful about this experience. Martin, I've got to talk to you, the older Martin says to himself, desperately in search of his younger self. And we see how lost and in pain the older Martin really is. The off-kilter angles as Martin chases his younger self on the rapidly moving carousel take us further into that world of psychological horror and deep unease. Martin seems almost like a predator after his younger self, and indeed he does damage himself, both of his selves, through this pursuit. What he wants so desperately to tell his younger self, this is a wonderful time of life for you, don't let any of it go by without enjoying it, seems so desperately sad because his life as an adult is so far away from that wonder and innocence and enjoyment. Martin is like the ghost of Christmas future on the carousel, and what he reflects of his future life is something that the children run from in terror. There's a real sense of despair and grief in Martin's monologue on the carousel about all he has lost. It's not just nostalgic melancholy. It goes far beyond that. There is real pain here, and I think it's pain we can all connect with. The scene where Martin's father acknowledges who he really is and they talk on the carousel has the most extraordinary tone and I'm not even sure how to describe it. This is something beyond the limits of ordinary drama and it reaches a level of emotional intensity unique to this sort of heightened fantasy. A fantasy that is electrified by an undercurrent of psychological horror, distress, pain, questioning Confronting oneself in this way seems almost too painful, too dangerous. There are levels to this remarkable episode that are hard even to articulate. Critic Paul Mandel of American Cinematographer wrote, Walking Distance was the most personal story Serling ever wrote, and easily the most sensitive dramatic fantasy in the history of television. I think I would have to agree there is something uniquely sensitive about this story. It's sensitive in the way it's written, but it also hits the viewer in the most sensitive and deeply rooted of nerves, ones that go beyond words. This is a story that could only exist in a show like The Twilight Zone and from a writer of such sensitivity as Rod Serling. Gig Young's plaintive and touching performance is the axis on which this whole carousel spins and it is emotionally dizzying. It does take you off balance and make you feel painful things. There is something very raw about this episode and the way it catches you off guard, unprepared for the depths it reaches. Martin leaves the episode limping and it is about emotional wounds and acknowledging them. The wounds we sustain between childhood and adulthood. The cast and crew. Director Robert Stevens was prolific as a TV director in this period. He directed 44 episodes of the wonderful Alfred Hitchcock Presents series, another one of my favourites. Gig Young had an amazing career in film and later in TV. He won an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for his supporting role in They Shoot Horses, Don't They? At the time of filming this episode, Gig Young was married to the fabulous Elizabeth Montgomery of Bewitched. Frank Overton, who plays the dad, is another of those great unsung character actors whose careers included roles in To Kill a Mockingbird, the Fugitive and Star Trek. 
before his tragically early passing at the age of only 49. Irene Treadow, who played Mrs. Sloan, is another such unsung character actor with an enormous list of film and TV credits to her name, as well as being a member of Orson Welles' Mercury Theatre. Ron Howard, who plays the boy with the marbles, of course needs no introduction. This is listed as only his third credited TV appearance, so really early in his career here. J. Pat O'Malley, who plays Mr. Wilson, was very prolific as a voice actor for Disney, among many other roles. He is credited by Dick Van Dyke as his dialect coach on Mary Poppins. Make of that what you will. <laughs> to sum up, I'd have to rate this story as highly as any featured in The Twilight Zone. As a half hour of TV drama, it transports us in the most surprising, disturbing and thought-provoking of ways. The performances are superb, the production flawless. Without engaging any sci-fi or horror concepts, apart from the idea of going back in time, it pulls the rug out from under us to the most startling effect. Quite an astonishing achievement in a half hour of television. Time Magazine ranked Walking Distance as the ninth best Twilight Zone episode ever. How do you rate this one? Let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you like and subscribe. I hope you'll join me next time when we move on to episode 6, Escape Clause. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope I'll see you then. Bye.